comes a moment along the inward journey, a shift happens, an unmistakable shift, an irreplaceable shift that you are the island that you were searching for. All around you is emptiness. All around you is the desert in the form of the sea. Throughout your life, you've been searching for yourself in this desert, hoping that you're going to find something, hoping that you will see yourself in one of the images. You will meet someone or something will happen that is going to give meaning to your pointless life. What you're searching for is that one moment that can make you feel like you know life. You know where you are. You know what's happening. Zarathustra, it has been close to 10 years. He's been in the mountains all alone searching for himself, searching for truth. His whole perspective of searching has changed. His whole perspective of what life is has changed. Initially, he was asking life for all the gifts that it can offer. He was a beggar of life. He wanted life to give him what he was looking for. And in all these years of searching, he's come to this profound realization that life cannot give him anything for she's a desert. There is nothing out there. I have to become the source of all that I'm searching for. It is me. I have to pour out my wisdom, my understanding of life. I have to squeeze the dew out of my life to liven the desert that is around me. Life is my experience, my making. It is my choosing, my action. There is nothing outside that can give me any sense of understanding of what life truly is. All I can get from outside are empty, meaningless words, concepts, ideas, theories, interpretations, never the actual taste of truth. And when you're in the desert, when you're lost, what is it that you're actually looking for? You're looking for that one drop of something authentic, not something great, you're not looking for some divine nectar of life. You're looking for one drop of water. Just to remind you that it is there. Just to remind you that it is not all desert. But what do you get mostly? You get maps. Maps leading to more maps. Throughout your life, you're only moving from one landscape to another, holding one map or the other. Map of the childhood, the map of your youth, then the map of your old age. Eventually, finally, you're fed up with all these maps and you throw it away and you settle. That's the only time when you are not asking anything from life. As a part of the wisdom that you have accumulated over all these years of asking and asking and asking, finally a day will come when you will not ask for anything. And if somebody tries to give you something, you will not even care. Life comes with all its beauty, all its allure, all its magic, but it can hardly move you. Now you know the game of life. You have understood very well that life has two completely different dimensions to it. 
One is the visible dimension, which from far away is always beautiful, always glittery, always enticing. But when you get closer, it is a totally different experience. Life is beautiful to look at. To experience it, it's a torture. Only time will teach us this wisdom. Schopenhauer gives a beautiful example. He says, wisdom is something like looking at an embroidered cloth. When you're young, when you're youthful, you always look at it from the right side. You look at the images, you look at the work of art, you look at the beauty, you look at the colors, and you're all excited. But as you get closer, you want to understand why is it like this? You want to understand the source. You want to understand who created it like this. But you cannot understand it by looking at this cloth from the right side. You have to go to the wrong side. When you go to the wrong side, it is not at all pretty. All you see are knots. All you see are all the weavings. But that is where there is some chance of you understanding what is that embroidery? How is it created? What is the structure? So when you get closer to life, all beauty vanishes. Now, it is effort. It is skill. It is your ability to understand. It is, a, it is your ability to sit watching that wrong side of the embroidery, which does not entice you, which does not draw you. Still, that is the only side through which you can figure out life. Saratustra is going through that shift. He was very naive. He did not know what life was. He thought it is a place where you are given things. He did not know life is there to simply take things from you. If it sees vitality in you, if it sees energy in you, it wants it. Either it will suck you dry or it will put you to some action where you will keep on doing something till you exhaust yourself and fall down. Life has no purpose, definite motive for you as an individual. As an individual, you're not even visible to life. But as a child of existence, this is a very cruel fact to accept. You are in this strange world with so much beauty, it is natural to assume that it's all there for you. It's all there to give you something. And every time you stumble, every time you fall, you make a mistake, you blame yourself. You never blame the landscape. You never blame the environment. You don't blame all that is acting upon you. Because somewhere there is this false understanding that how can something so beautiful be working against me. Maybe I am not understanding it. Maybe I am not connecting with it. We spend our entire youth chasing after things, hoping that someday life opens herself and gives all that we are searching for. But that moment never comes. Eventually, that realization settles. Well, maybe life is not about chasing. It's not about asking for things. There is nobody watching me. There is nobody watching over me. There are no invisible forces. There are no eyes. I am totally invisible. As far as existence is concerned, I don't even exist. Then what am I asking for? How can I ask for things? Maybe the trick is in understanding it myself. Maybe the key to knowing life is not on the outside, but somewhere inside. 
Maybe I need to turn inward. Maybe there is something behind this cloth. I've been holding it like this on the right side all my life. Let me turn it and see what's there on the other side. And you turn it. First is depression. A sheer terror. What is this? Is life this chaotic? Is the fabric of life so confusing to understand? So utterly nonsensical. All kinds of thoughts. Unnecessary thoughts. Sometimes the same patterns repeating again and again and again. In some places it's broken. There's no connection. Some places there's patchwork. Nothing is orderly. Nothing is written there for you to understand. Either this first turning inward scares the hell out of you and run back. You will eventually say, I am never going to turn this cloth. I'm never going to see what's on the other side. It's fine if I don't understand life. I'm going to frame this cloth. At least let me live and die with this feeling that I know something about life. This is the typical judgment of a religious mind. It is scared of inquiry. It is scared of going in. It is scared of facing the madness of life. It just settles with a false comfort. Well, let me leave it to fate. Let me leave it to some force above and beyond me. A few among us will rejoice in the fact that it is not as simple as it appears. It is not as pretty as you thought it would be. They rejoice because for the first time, they're in a place that is not trying to deceive you through its beauty, through its magic, through its allure. Life in its pristine raw form is presenting itself to you and you have to make something of it. Then begins the inward journey. Then begins the untying of the knots, understanding the layer of your thoughts, understanding the layer of your emotions, to see where anger is coming from, to see where fear is coming from, to see what the body is, what the sensations of the body are. What is this phenomenon called life? Where is it happening? Is it inside? Is it outside? What is smell? What is taste? One whole world of experiences open up. The more time you spend there, the more you are deciphering what life is made of. And eventually, you will realize that this is all a trick. It is all a game. Neither that embroidery is real, nor the cloth is real. All this was only a device to finally introduce me to myself. To just remind me that what I am searching for is a full-blown, unrestricted experience of myself. Without a thought, without a disturbance. I just wanted to simply be. Because that's my nature. Beingness, being, is the only reality, the ultimate reality. Because I was trying to become, I was missing it. 